us in a prayer, and then Colt will go take over for me. If you bow your heads. Lord, thank you for the day and the opportunity to come together again for the business of our district. Please be with us in our thoughts and our words and our actions so bring betterment to the district and glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Conversation about who took it, why they took it, and whether or not we can get it back. So, um, McDougal's daughter called the people who own the place now and said, Can they put the hog out sign back up? And they said, Sure, we don't care. And then, of course, Tony, who went to the cool Boy Scouts. Now, JR's uncle, Melissa's brother, who put that sign there in the first place many years ago, I don't even know how long it's been there, probably most of my life. Yeah. And so JR, his nephew, is going to get to be part of putting the Hall Guy sign back up there. So we'll have a welcome to the Hall Guy sign up there again. So we're doing citizenship in the community this month. So I told them part of the bad is you got to attend the meeting. So they decided to come on to the meeting. All right. So we have done our call to order and invocation. I didn't see anybody sign up to talk. JR, do you want to talk or anything? You will? Did anybody sign up to talk? I didn't see anybody. Okay. Didn't make sure they missed something. And we'll go ahead and go to the information 4A. Council payable. If uh, anyone wants to discuss any, anything on that item, uh, it's there. So. Anything, anybody, we can keep moving? I have the bird that go. Uh, consent items. Typically, we approve them as a group, unless there's somebody has something they want pulled out. Can I get a motion to approve the consent items? Patty, get a second. Dr. Warchat, any discussion? All in favor? Is that a vote over there, Dr. Warchat? Sorry, right. okay. Just check it. <laughs> Say unanimous from the four of us that are here. All right, discussion items. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to, you saw in your packet the preliminary uh, scores for the STAR test. I uh, just want to bring that to your attention. And uh, on there, you can, you can already see we have, all of our areas are really good. We have three that we definitely uh, want to target for this next year. Uh, to increase, and that's third grade reading, sixth grade math, and then our history and our EOC. Uh, but our scores again uh, this year are well above state average. Uh, if you look at some of the state averages on some of these tests, you can tell the difficulty level of some of the state tests are just not the same in grade. So. Take a look at that if you see an area where 
you know, you say, oh, well, that's, that's awful low. Uh, you know, then take a look at the state average, for, for example. One example is eighth grade social studies. A 75% for us passing, and we think, well, we can do better than that. But if you look at the state average, that's 11 percentage points above the state average. So there's quite a bit of uh, difference in difficulty level of these tests. But overall, our scores came out very, very good, very strong. Uh, as I said, there are areas that we want to target this next year, and we've already begun to uh, write the plan for targeting those areas. So uh, any questions regarding uh, the preliminary star results at this point? Well, that's for the next time. Oh, okay. That's, what I, was, we did there. okay. that's what I was saying. Okay. Um, Okay, any other any questions, discussion about that? Well, it, since since you paused so long, <laughs> <laughs> when you say preliminary, to me the numbers either are what could change, what third could uh, change. Where you have you have some you have three administrations of some tests, which is fifth grade and eighth grade, and uh, in those two levels, all of the tests results are not back yet. In other words, okay. these uh, so are, the state averages could be different. This is the first round of uh, results, and the second round will come back and like that. And so until until all standards. the tests are taken, then we don't have all the numbers, so the number could change. Yeah, I mean, all of our, I mean, are our numbers going to possibly change, or is it mostly just the Our numbers will possibly change. Oh, right. We'll go higher. They will we'll not go lower. Oh, okay. Uh, and then once the AEI is report comes out in November, that's when they're finalized. Thank you. Okay, just some discussion regarding the swimming pool. Uh, you know, basically we kind of have some good news here because we are no longer losing water out of that pool. And as soon as um, we can get the water cleaned up and regulated, then we're ready to go. And so now it's in Mars hands. So. <laughs> That's your problem. <laughs> uh, no, we will we will still need to uh, there will gonna be some decisions we have to make later on, but right now this is gonna be able to get us through the summer. And uh, instead of piling dirt back in the hole and pour cement right there, we're gonna make some temporary changes right there so that we can get the kids in the in the pool now for this summer so it's, it's doable and uh, Laura we appreciate your patience and Ken's patience and all of those guys patience because it's been something but anyway we're to it we're to a good point now so uh, now we're we'll doing quit raining now that we're raining <laughs> tomorrow is planned to cover up the hole and that area and be prepared as soon as the water is ready to go so that's the update on the on the pool at this point. Okay, any questions or discussion regarding that? That's good news. It is good news. Yeah. Well, we have kids that are already at what two days in the swimming lesson? So they yeah, two days in the swimming lesson, they got kicked out of the pool. Yeah. And then Annette's gone after next week. So it's like you got four days now to finish their swimming lessons or we gotta get the money back for them to get swimming lessons. So it's kind of a, we were getting to a window that might close. Okay, the next item is uh, simply the goals that were established. That bird is not in this room. That, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he must be over that den up there. Uh, okay. But uh, these were the goals that, that were established last, uh, last uh, August, I believe it was. So just to give you an update uh, on, on these, uh, I'm not going to kill you with, with information, but I, I just want you to have the documentation to, to look through uh, when you have the time. But one is the vertical alignment between uh, the grades and all the subject uh, areas. And what you have there is simply that just documentation of all of the uh, uh, vertical alignment meetings that took place during the year. 
uh, starting actually during the summer, but those are that's documentation on all of those meetings uh, with the campuses, uh, visiting, talking with each other, teams planning together, so we can get that vertical alignment where it needed to be. Uh, and again, that's that's all that documentation. The second one is we wanted to improve the utilization of technology in the classroom, uh, staff, and district and community. Well, I, I can't tell you enough um, the change that took place this year with the use of technology in the classrooms. Um, and a big part of it was because the board uh, went ahead and added that technology position uh, in the classroom, and that helped a great deal. We also had four, how many went with y'all to the technology show? There were 18 that went to 18 of y'all went? I mean, and I, are y'all aware of that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know yes. what I'm talking about? I'm not sure. A 18 went to, there's a state technology convention every year, and we sent 18 teachers and principals. Which hasn't been this, we haven't sent that many in the past. We have ramped up to the point that we're, we sent 18 this year who are going to set through cool tools of here's how you can use this for your classroom. And then we have somebody here that went there that once he gets back he can walk in your classroom with you okay let me show you how to apply this to what you have in your classroom because a lot of times even if they went to the, the training they come back and say now how can you do that again and i don't have one of those now what and they wouldn't get to utilize it as well now they're actually with somebody there he sees it and he comes back home with a play so it makes it much easier to implement in the classroom so Daniel Rich uh, has been a, a big, big asset to all the teachers this year in uh, adding technology to the classroom. Next year, or this coming year, at the technology uh, conference, we will not send as many this coming year. We will send a few, a, a lesser number, and then the following year send a larger number. So, uh, but that way we're able to spend uh, some more money on technology every other year and spend more money on the technology we, we training. Train them and buy, train them and buy. Yeah, correct. So it's, uh, it, it's been a, a really good year for that. Randy can attest to that as far as uh, the number of times that uh, Daniel has just been booked by teachers, you know, helping teachers in the classroom. So it's been, it's been great. Well, he was, on top of that, the Education Foundation gave dozen thousand dollars or whatever it was of technology to various classrooms that we even got implemented yet they'll start in september so we've got a ton of technology coming for next year as well just from what the education foundation was able to provide randy oh another thing i was trying to tell you we we held the technology conference here at our campus uh in june and we had a little over a hundred people in attendance at that meeting uh, and Randy, if you would give us a short synopsis on not so much that workshop, but in your visiting with other technology directors, where we are in relation to a lot of other districts with our technology. Well, we didn't as much this past school year, but I usually meet with about five other technology directors about every month, kind of for a roundtable discussion. Um, and so we just kind of talk about what we're doing, things that are working, things that aren't working. Um, so I get to hear from places like Kilgore, Longview, ISD, Pine Tree, Spring Hill, Wade Water, you know, some schools around us. And uh, I really, I feel that we are above everyone else as far as what we have. And now with instructional technology, how we're using it as well. Um, you know, we, uh, even looking, I'll get emails from other groups and other areas in, in our Region 7 area. And, you know, a lot of these schools just do not have the devices. They don't have the infrastructure in place, the wireless infrastructure, the, uh, the network infrastructure. Um, but we have all of that. And we're steadily increasing. So um, compared to other schools, I'd say we're, we're a high above them. Uh, and we're the little one there. compared to the group you just named. And what's that? We're the little school in that group you just named. Yes, yes, we are. We are very much the little school in that group. And um, you know, in, in I guess about five years ago, when we um, we didn't hardly have much at all. 
And in these past uh, four to five years, we, um, we've gained so much. And, and our goal is, if, if it's possible, uh, maybe by the end of this year or next year, uh, for all of the high schools, every class, every classroom to have a card, Chromebook card that we've been working towards. Um, middle school already has uh, that in place for all their core classes. And I know we talked about this in previous meetings, but, um, and then uh, elementary has grades three and above, all have their own card. Um, and now the lower grades have three parts that they can basically want for each grade level that they can rotate. Uh, so we really are exceeding in what we have, and like I said, with instructional technology and how we get it now. So it's no, no longer, like Tony said, here's the stuff, now have at it. Uh, now it's here's the stuff, and we're going to guide you along the way. And um, you know, some of the goals that we've set in place, even just this past year, we've been, we've been meeting as far as what we would like to see done in the classroom. Um, and, and we're, we're exceeding that each, uh, each six weeks, really. I mean, we really are. So it's, it's exciting to see, like Mr. Bryce said, how much uh, that position is being used, uh, but also, too, how much the teachers are feeling better about using technology because they feel more confident basically having someone to help them uh, and guide them along the way. And so That's what I've said for years, that you've got to have the confidence, which means the comfort. And when you have the comfort, you have the confidence. Which means, and it's just a, it's a circle. It's a, it's a positive circle. But if you have the confidence, you have the comfort, which allows you to have more confidence. So you keep, you'll keep trying things and not be scared of oops if I mess up. Absolutely. So very, very much pleased with the growth that we've had. Um, okay, another one of the goals that, that we put in place was a facilities plan, looking at long range plans. Um, and we, the long range plans, I didn't make no copy, but I brought the notebook for y'all to look at. But, uh, you know, on there we had softball complex, tennis courts, ag farm updates, additional classroom space at high school and middle school. New restroom, concession stands at the football stadium, security updates at high school and middle school, update light, sound, and seating in the auditorium, uh, replace bleachers in high school and middle school gyms, turf on the football field, and uh, marquee sign at the elementary. Now, these are long range goals, okay? These are not our immediate goals, but these are long range goals. And the direction of the board was to tackle one of these at a time. So the softball field is the first thing that the board wanted to do. So we are in the middle of that right now. In fact, I have a timeline that from the architect on this softball field so that you will see the completion date. You will see the completion date uh, of this. Uh, so the softball field is, is underway. We're ready for them to, as soon as the engineers finish with their part of it, they're going to be going out for bids. They're going to be advertising for bids. They have those dates on here and uh, all the way through the completion date. So you're about to, you know, by January, by the end of January, actually soon, uh, you will knock off the first one. You will knock off the softball field. You won't have that completed. And uh, girls will be able to play on that field this year, this coming school year, which is important. Yeah, that's exciting. That's about a five-year goal in the works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then the, another area that... Oh. I have a question. Oh, and I hate to show, show my ignorance, but what is a punch list? It's when a... That's a good part. <laughs> yeah. 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 Explain what that is. That's when you get into negotiations on what has to be finished, what okay. is acceptable okay. to us. The, and what the they purchase they what we call done and yes. what they call done. Okay. And we've got to be on the same done. Okay. Well, the way that, the reason they do it, like this, they say they're finished. What do you see is still this? You make a bunch of this. 
And when that punch list is done, the project's over. You can't go back and add more stuff yeah. after okay. that. Because yeah. otherwise, you can never get finished. Yeah, you can't just keep adding. Okay. That's, gotcha. your, that's your final, okay. what has to be done. That did, is a big did anybody else out there not understand what anything, that yeah. was? <laughs> if you've never built anything, it's not a common thing. I learned it only because of building something. So. Okay. All right. Yeah, they, like deal. the punch list at the elementary when we built it was okay. huge. <laughs> it was. Yeah, there's a mark on this door. This light doesn't work. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. You bet. Uh, okay, so the, the next thing that the, the next direction that the board wanted to look at was the security upgrades at high school and middle school. And of course, that is on the agenda tonight for you to address. So, you know, looking at that long-range facility list, y'all are about to knock out two long-range items already, which is a good thing. You know, that's a good thing. Um, so then after that, I do have uh, quotes for some of the other items <coughs> on this list. Then it's going to be in at the August board meeting. You will look at this and kind of range prioritize how you want to tackle the next one, so, which will be first, second, third. Okay. So. Well, it may have to do with money too, so you need to oh, all this with most <laughs> Well, and, and of course, yes, because you have to set the timeline. Right. You're not going, we're not going to start another uh, long-range facility plan go right immediately because of funding, just like you say. Yeah. That would not be in our best interest. So. Uh, Okay, then uh, looking at we want to continue developing the Sabine ISD Education Foundation. Uh, and folks, that kind of went way above where we thought we would be at this time. So we, that foundation has gathered, has, yeah, gathered in uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000 in one year. So uh, we do have a good board in place, good board of directors in place for that uh, foundation. Misty G does a, a really good job and uh, our next fundraiser is for October 14th, is that right? 14th? I think so. Do you have that off? Go ahead now. October 14th, that's what our next fundraiser out there. Yeah, I believe that's, that's right. I can't remember. Is that the second Saturday, Saturday of October? October 13th. 13th. Okay, that's the second Saturday in October, and we're going to, we're going to try to put that down each year. October 13th. The we're having Saturday. a big party. You're invited. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Can y'all tell the boys what the Education Foundation is and All right. what it does? Education Foundation. If just here's the easy version, so you understand. Okay, you understand what band boosters and athletic and we have fire boosters and they are a separate entity that gathers and collects money and does fundraisers and then gives them to either athletics or choir or band or ag or whatever organization they support but we never had academic boosters we didn't have classroom boosters we just had boosters for everything else so the education foundation has raised all this money nearly a hundred thousand dollars and then teachers can write grants to say, I'd really like to have a couple of thousand dollars so I could have some computers or I said have so I could have some extra this in my classroom or I really need to be able to do that in my classroom. So we've got 3D printers coming and we've got some robotic stuff coming. We've got all kinds of cool toys that are coming and then some other things with just some improvements that people needed. But the Education Foundation had these big fundraisers and then they donated money to the school to be distributed amongst all the teachers that wrote the grants that asked for stuff. Okay? So most of your teachers at some level probably receive some money somewhere. Because like different teachers in the elementary, teachers in junior high, uh, Laura Ms. Strickland got one, different ones got different grants. The GT teacher, Ms. Corbett, she got the grant. So different teachers ask for different things and they were rewarded a certain amount of money so they could buy whatever it is they wanted. But it's a way to put money back into the classroom that's not really in the school budget, but for somebody to have a fundraiser and be able to donate it that way. So it really is, a, it's a great thing. It really helps out the classroom. And like I said, it, it's kind of like academic boosters, like you have athletic boosters and all of those. They said don't call it that, but it kind of is. 
<laughs> well, they very specific. Don't call it that. It's not what it is. Well, it kind of is. So, so that that goal uh, certainly has been reached, and, and certainly we feel like it's going to get even better after this first year because uh, we know a little more uh, thing. You know, some we almost know what we're doing. Not to do. <laughs> so, but uh, it's it's gone really well. Uh, number five was the. Uh, continue the demolition of the old elementary building and prepare for future use. Um, so we're there on that. So we uh, we were very fortunate to have a really good um, contractor with the demo that worked out really well, prepared uh, us for the next step. So now all the surveying is done, well, we're ready to go on the field. So Who's responsible for the wooden hole where the hallway came into the cafeteria? The there's a wooden where the hall is. We'll have to do that. Is that something that's already done? That's 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 oh, we fixed it? Yeah. Okay. I just we had to pay that close attention. I just remember yeah. the wood there. We performed this. They ripped it up. I was at the wood cash camp with four less. We got, uh, we got <laughs> several quotes from the companies. Uh, RLM had the best quote on that. Mm -hmm. They got to work and they did yeah. I would like to say on that note. That sounds like something you just brush right over, but honestly, if you go to other communities, you see old schools still standing. They're an eyesore, and no one wants to bite the bullet and spend the money to do the work that needs to be done. So, so eventually it burns. That, and all the bankers have to Well, I don't know if they ever burn <laughs> because there's so much concrete. Yeah. But that was a great service to the community, spending the money. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they realize that. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, we can. Uh, yeah, That's we can all. Play. Yeah. Right. We can all drive through those communities you're talking yes. about, see old school buildings, and they right. uh, they serve no purpose. Right. Right. You either fix them or you get rid of them. Yeah. And I'm pretty uh, proud. Yeah. And, and I'm glad. I appreciate the board having that insight to do that instead of leaving that thing there, because it does cost money to tear it down. That's right. So, uh, and then number six, continue with program activities, build school spirit, school pride, and, uh, community pride. Uh, we had, you know, this year we had a whole lot of uh, school pride with our kids. I mean, we had a whole lot to be proud of. When you win a, <laughs> what, six different state championships in one year, that's pretty amazing for our three school. That's really amazing. And that's not counting the choir and uh, the individual band students and the individual art students that excel at the state level. So it was an amazing year. Um, and of course, y'all already know the, the community cleanup uh, that we did. That was that was extremely good. But what what went from there is we were able to connect with different families after that to go do some work at their homes that they needed help. And we were glad to help them. Our ag uh, department certainly uh, helped out a tremendous amount on that. And we went to several homes and, and did some repairs. Uh, also, our anchor club helped out tremendously with, with some of those things. So, uh, you know, we just want to continue that more and more and more, uh, but success, in a lot of areas like this certainly helps promote that too. So anyway, that is uh, an update of uh, or the superintendent who made regarding the update. Any other discussion? <coughs> we move into action items the 7A. Okay, 7A is uh, something that we do each year. Uh, we're required by TEA to uh, develop and publish uh, the appraisal calendar for our teachers and staff. Uh, you can see the appraisal calendar in your packet does it very much from last year because basically we're nearly on the same calendar as we were last year. Uh, and there are times that uh, evaluations cannot happen uh, in the classroom and those are rotated there. And then also, uh, besides the appraisal calendar, the certified appraisers, must be approved, and uh, those will, will be Monica Pepper, Stephanie Bouchard, uh, at those two at the high school, Stanton Reeves, and Sarah Cantrell Middle School, Terry Bass, Judy Cotier, 
the elementary Vicky Thornton with our SSA and our curriculum director Shelly Hayes. So, uh, only one name on there is different from last year. So, that's our high school assistant principal. So, any questions regarding either the calendar or the appraisers? If not, it would be my recommendation to approve the 2018-19 appraisal calendar and appraisers. All right, we got a recommendation, take a motion. Take a motion, get a second. Dr. Moore, chat a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Then it's security guard. Okay. Uh, security guard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I made you look at it. Yes. Uh, okay, our next one is something that we've been working on uh, for a while, and that's our security upgrades at our middle school and high school. And uh, there's another item that I'm glad the board was willing to, to tackle uh, because safety is a major, major issue here our, that we don't want it to be an issue to make sure all, all kids and staff are safe when they come to school uh, and no we don't have a big issue with with that kind of thing but that's what some other schools would say too before right before something we have so we just want to make sure we do all we can to protect our kids and our staff so what you see you have in front of you and, and you've looked at uh, different quote two different quotes from from companies and uh, we Randy and I specifically have met with these uh, folks two or three times and uh, had them they actually turned in quotes to us and then we added some more to it because we didn't feel like what we had on there would be enough to do what we needed as far as safety was concerned so they went back to the drawing board uh, put together another plan and came back with some some more quotes and uh, if you look at at the quotes, uh, you can see that we're looking at both access control, which are all of our exit doors, uh, where you, they cannot open unless you set it to where it can open, computer-wise, in other words, just like our elementary, similar to our elementary. Uh, it would be key cards uh, to open doors, and it's on a computer system to where all doors lock down at a certain time. You can unlock all doors at a certain time or just specific doors at a certain time. Um, also, along with that, we asked them to give us a quote on cameras. Uh, as we discussed before, before we started this, we have some cameras that are old, outdated, and we needed to upgrade those. And, uh, both of these companies have done that, and I think we're looking at about uh, 66 cameras uh, in this proposal. You so, will be watched. <laughs> <laughs> so, both of these companies are good companies. Uh, in looking at, they they get to the end goal in different ways in some parts uh, of their proposals, but that's okay. But in looking at it uh, and, and checking references and, and all that, um, if you look at the prices of, of everything, nothing's cheap, that's for sure. But uh, we're, we're willing to pay to keep our folks safe. So uh, Electrolink is the company that was used for the elementary school. Uh, Looking at these two, though, you, you can see that they're a little, bit, a little pricier than, than uh, Guardian. Guardian, by the way, is the company that we all talked to at a conference. Is it really? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just a chance for you. <laughs> we talked to them, and they are extremely good about coming out when we ask them to come out. Uh, the in checking references their uh, service or uh, going back to schools and working with them is really good. Uh, Randy will tell you, electrically, not that they're not good, but we would wait a couple weeks for their responses sometimes, you know, and uh, uh, Guardian was never that way, so we're pretty impressed with Guardian. Plus, 
uh, if you look, Guardian's uh, quote is going to be less than uh, electively. So I certainly uh, would entertain questions. Uh, at this point, it would be my recommendation to uh, approve Guardian to do the uh, security upgrade with the contingency of, of course, just like our architect, we have to agree to work out a contract with them first. I have, I will say this, I have asked Tony, since he's in that line of work now, uh, to come up and sit in with us on that contract negotiation when we're looking at, at uh, these security items. So. All right, so got a recommendation. Can I get a motion? To approve Guardian as the vendor based on getting to a contract. Can I ask a question for so we'll get there. Oh, okay. We'll get a motion. We'll get a second. Do you second? Do you want to second? I'll second. Patty, motion. Tony, second. Discussion. Uh, Mr. Bryce, uh, I'm an uh, electrolux. There, there were four different totals. One was option one, was one was option two. So I'm assuming that those two, it's either one or the other. Right. It, the total on yeah. theirs, okay, what what that is, Electrolink put all of theirs together on, on this, and I'll back up first. They gave a proposal on uh, us using some of our existing cameras and that was option one or proposal one. And then proposal two was all brand new cameras. And Guardian did the same thing. There's just is not included. They took that part out and did the second bid. You know, second all new equipment. Correct. That they gave us one on the uh, on replacing some of the first, but then after we asked for the second one. Uh, of course, they took off that option out, and Electrolink just chose to leave theirs in there at the time. But, but uh, these proposals are replacing all cameras, straight so cameras. Back to, I'm going to assume that for the most part, the scope of work, the number of cameras, and all that is relatively identical. Correct. And if my math is right, Electrolux was like fifty thousand dollars more. Correct. That's a no-brainer. <laughs> That's a no-brainer. They're, they're putting it at forty-five thousand dollars. I'd like to cold cold uh, motion. <laughs> That's, my, that's what I was trying to get. And, and, and that's a good point because not only you know when we first got uh, a quote from Guardian and they walked around the places, counted how many cameras, that kind of thing. And then Randy and I were talking, it just wasn't enough, they didn't cover everything. Uh, and we got them back and they did a, a complete walk around with Randy, going around with them. And the proposal from Electrically, Randy gave them the exact same specs so that they would give the exact same number of Merchandise, in other words, cameras. So there's 66 cameras out there. Yes, and I'm, Man, I'm sorry, ahead. I hate to no, go ahead. correct, but the the price differences y'all are talking about are for the access controls and the door, uh -huh. not, not the cameras. The okay, cameras yeah, are the same. Yeah. It was the access yeah, the cam control. Yeah, the camera difference. Camera quotes between the two companies did not change. Well, I was just talking about the entire package. Oh, okay. I'm so, sorry. I, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to be clear. Yeah. About yeah no, you're exactly so, right on that. Day. Yeah. The, they're Access control is the fact they can walk up to the door, right. push a push bar, and somebody in the office knows that door's open. Okay. And if they set a button, that door doesn't open. Kids don't have access to open and close doors anymore. That's true. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's true. true. <laughs> and if they do, we know. And if they okay. does get open, we know about it. Yes. Okay. There would be a camera telling us. Yeah. All right. Guardian is in Lubbock. Mm -hmm. We've never done business with them before, right? Okay. We haven't. Who, when we did the elementary school, were there other people besides, I know there were, than this Electra, whatever it is. Electrolink. Electrolink. Well, see, at the time, if you remember, we did construction manager at risk. So they were the ones taking all the 
bids and quotes in oh, okay. at that time. It was okay. not us. So. Okay. Uh, but no, in visiting with, in, in talking with uh, Guardian, their main office is in Lubbock, but they also, uh, I don't know if it's yet open, but they're opening an office in Mansfield, too. Okay. Mansfield, they do a lot of work in Mansfield. Okay. In their school district. And it is funny, because I found them at Tasby, walked up to them and said, hey, we need security system. Which you found them? Everybody. <laughs> they have the guns. They have they have a laser shoot. So here's yeah. what really happened. They had a cool camera set up. Yes. And they had a video that did 360 recording all the time. I'm like, wow. Yeah. So we asked them, and then we already been talking about security. But I never would have dreamed they would have. Uh, That's who we selected. Would have been right. cheapest. I would have thought that. After as many times as we've done this, you know better. You know. Did we get one of those cameras? It's a 360. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't, but you can always approve that. <laughs> <laughs> Just the thought that you could do 360 video recording is pretty neat. I blew my mind. So, All right, so we have a second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. All right. Yep. At this time, we are going to go to closed session at 7 to 14. Did we officially argue about anything? So they have some argument. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You could express an opinion. On that. Guys, I was wrong. We should not have waited on that. Alright, so what happens now is we have to sit and talk about all the stuff that we can't talk about in open session and eat supper. In about 35, 45 minutes or so, we'll come back out of the closed session. You don't have to stick around. But if you want to, we'll be back in a little bit and we'll tell you what happened in closed session or vote on something. But you don't have to. But you don't have to stick around if you don't want to. It's not that exciting. You, you have met the uh, requirements. Yeah. <laughs>